we got, there's more diseases on the books than there are books. Mm. Doctors are having to refer to this book and that book and go to this specialist and that specialist That's and right. emotional healing. Mm. And we're coming up with things that we've never heard of before when it comes to emotional healing. And so the Lord began to say that he is our hope. Oh, yes. And he is our restoration. Yes, you are. And I know this week has been a trying week for most, or this last two weeks. Or, but God, when he gave this to me about two weeks ago, he knew yes. where we were going to be today. Yes. He yes. knew that we were going to be in this position right today. Mm -hmm. We have four members that are of this body that are going through emotions that need, uh, that are going through neurological um, conditions in their body. Mother Gardner, right. Sister Mac, uh, Sister Span, Span. Micaiah, and Sister Connie. Yes. And I said, God, devil, you are a lie. You know, God said that we can have help and we can have uh, it restored. And so what we're going to talk about today um, is going to be coming from the book of Mark. And um, in, in this particular text, we're going to be talking about the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. And I know that, that this message has been preached so many times in so many different ways. And we normally like to rely on her issues and just talk about, you know, women having issues. And I know people like to always, we like a lot of drama, so we're going to talk right. about <laughs> women with issues. But that's not, what, that's not the issue we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about it in a positive way. Yes. How that hope was restored. Yes. So, and, and, um, and it's so prevalent that it's mentioned three times in the Gospels. It's mentioned in Matthew chapter 9, Mark 5, Luke 8. And in those particular chapters of the Word, uh, there are stories of people being healed from all types of condition, mm -hmm. which Jesus had healed them. And he proclaimed that he's a great physician. Mm -hmm. And in these, all these chapters, when you go through and you start looking at, you see that he came as the great physician mm -hmm. to bring healing yes. to us. He, he is our hope. Yes. The word says that he is our hope of glory. Yes. And so in, this, <clears throat> in those cha chapters, excuse me, we will, we will see that all these situations, and I'm not going to go all over them, but if you would read through those chapters, Matthew 9, Mark 5, and Luke 8, you will find out that every situation in that chapter, it seemed like a hopeless state, that it was a hopeless con uh, condition. And I'm just going to give you a little synopsis to, run, to jog your memory, because I know you know the story well. But in those chapters, it says there was a man that was in need of mental deliverance. He was possessed with the legion of devils. In those chapters, there is a paralytic man. He was lying on his bed, sick of palsy. People say you can't walk if you're paralyzed. Mm. Mm. A hopeless condition, right? Mm. Um, then there was Mary Magdalene. Jesus cast out seven devils out of her. You know, that we write people off when we say, oh, they demonic depressed, oppressed. So we, we, we don't want to deal with that. But Jesus did. And also there's Jairus, uh, his daughter. She was sick. Well, actually, the young girl died. But Jesus looked at him and told him, she's not sick. Hmm. She's just asleep. asleep. And he took her by the hand <laughs> and he raped Hopeless condition. Yes. The world said when you're dead, you're done. Mm -hmm. But now with Jesus, he came to restore. Yes. So all of these situations seem mm -hmm. hopeless. Yes. But all things are possible, God, to them yes. that believe. Right. So if we believe mm -hmm. by faith yes. that God can do a thing, yes. we can decree it, we can right. stand on it, and he can do it. Yes. And that's what we heard in our testimony from Minister McPhail this morning. Yes. God touched her body. Yeah. Hallelujah. By faith, and he restored all the things that she was going through in Mother Gardner's house. Yeah. 
God has turned he to God a restoration. Can't nobody didn't know where the money was coming from. But God restored and all. Hallelujah. And as I said before, we're going through some situations. If you want to look at it, that they're in a hopeless situation. Oh, but the devil's alive. There is restoration. He is the restoration. And so all through God's word, there are scriptures that are meant to give us hope. And why is it because I said it earlier? He, the word said that a man born of a woman, is, his days is full of trouble. So he knows that our lives will be filled with problems, with issues, with stress, with anxiety, with doubt, um, and distressful situation. Yes. God knew this. Yes, he he knows that's why Jesus is sitting on the throne interceding mm. for us now. Mm. So God wanted us to be confident like sheep. Mm. He said that we'd be able to lie down in green pastures. Mm. He will lead us yes. beside yes. the still yes. water. Yes. But it goes back to the Sunday school lesson. He that have an ear to hear when he speaks. He's going to lead you by the still yes. water. When you're going through the situations where there's anxiety, where there's distress, where there's time to that, that you want to fret, the master takes us by the hand and he leads us yes. by still yes. water. So, I don't know about you, but how many of us are in need to hear a word, or we like to hear the word, when the Lord says, thy faith has made thee well, whole, yes. or thy faith has made thee well. Yes. And this is what we're going to find out, what he says to the woman with the issue. Because I, I surely do want to hear, that, hear the Lord tell me that when I'm going through, that he's going to reward me because of my faith. Yes. My hope in him has made me well. Amen. Um, the story of, of, of Jesus healing a woman with an issue of blood after touching the hem of his garden, his garment is so important that it's recorded, as I said earlier, three times, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It has been preached and taught on so many different levels. But God gave this message to me for, to encourage the body of Sanctuary Liberty Church. Amen. Like I said, right now we're going through situations that we're dealing with. Our, our, our members have been affected by conditions. But we know that we can take it to the Lord. Yes. Take our prayers to the Lord. He said, the fetch of fervent prayer of the righteous man, it's going to be a much. Yes. So when we come on one accord mm. and we touch and agree, yes. we know that God can deliver, bring them out, and restore. Amen. I often think about Mother Gardner. She's not textbook she, they, she's not textbook uh, savvy. Her condition don't match what the textbook is saying. Amen. The state that she's supposed to be in. Amen. But God is a God of restoration. Amen. And I believe it's because Mother Gardner has so much of the word Amen. down in her that she's still holding on to. Amen. And that God is sustaining us. Hallelujah. So here, um, so that's where we're going to begin our text today. In, um, if you return to Mark chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 25 to 20, uh, 34. And as you turn in, you got it, we're just going to go to the throne in prayer. So do we have, dear Heavenly Father, I just come before you this morning. Lord, I humbly submit myself to your will, yes. to your Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that I decrease and that you would increase in me. And that we will grasp what you're saying unto us. That when situations appear to be hopeless, they're not hopeless. Because all things are possible to them that believe. And Lord, we thank you because we hear your word. Lord, you said your word and that if we hear your word, it will be act out in our life. And Lord, we just want to thank you that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us. Holy Spirit, we give you praise, give you glory, and all honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Mark chapter 5, it's going to begin, like I said, it talks about a lot of things in this chapter. And also in Luke and in Matthew, if you want to read about the different hopeless situations where people were healed, this is where you go. Uh, and we know all through the word that 
people were, you know, healed. Wherever the Lord went, he touched and healed. Yes. Because why? He had compassion. Mm. He had love. Yes. And he said that that same compassion and love that he has for us, he want us to have one for another. Yeah. I was touched this week. I felt the uh, I felt the bereavement from the Garrett family. I felt the situation with my dear sister, Sister Span. I miss Sister Span not sitting there. Yeah. I felt Micaiah when Sister Inez called me and told me that this baby had had another seizure. Yeah. I felt Sister Connie had to be away from her family in Waco in the VA hospital. I'm feeling all of these things to have compassion, but I know that I can take these things. I can't carry the burden, but I can take them to the Lord and leave it there. So in this lesson, I want you to look at and have compassion on this woman. But she also, in her com in having compassion, this woman is going to tell us what to do. When we go through distressful situations, when we go through situations that look, look like all oh, hope is gone. I remember many days going through with my brother Bubba mm -hmm. that when despair wanted to come in, mm -hmm. but I had to press. Yeah. This is, I often hear mother say, this is a pressing way. Yeah. You're just not going to get it, said, am I sitting down and folding your hands mm -hmm. or crying your way through it? You can cry, but yet press your way on through yeah. Because it is that's what he looks at. He sees that determination in us. And he rewards it. So if we don't go, because we're saying in that determination, we're saying, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that God is able. I know that he can do it. And Mother often says, you got to know and you'll know that the Lord will do it. So in Mark chapter 5, it reads, I'm going to put my eyes on. It reads, uh, I'm actually going to start on verse 24. It says, and Jesus went with him. He went with a, a man, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12, uh, issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Take your heart mm. and feel this woman. Mm. This, it don't name her. It don't tell us how old she was. She was an old woman or she was a young woman. Mm. Some people think, okay, she might have been young because of what she was dealing with. No, you can deal with that enough as an older woman mm. or as well. But it said that she had this issue for 12 years. Mm. Can you imagine dealing with something for 12 years? Mm. That equates to 483 days, 144 months, three, 636 weeks. We don't want to deal with three, five, and seven days, right, ladies? Amen. Amen. Can you imagine? All of this time, 400, I mean 4,383 days of issue of life leaving her body every day she had to deal with because life was in the blood yes, and she was losing and and she saw her life slipping away yes. what if every day i imagine she went and said is it stop yet mm. and come away and nothing she took all her money mm. and gave it to physicians doctors don't have every answer and they'll tell you they'll tell you i don't know what's wrong but we're going to keep searching until we find out. Mm -hmm. But when they say that, that's when you say, Lord, but I know you know. Right. You know you made me. You know yeah. every hair on my head. Yeah. You know everything about this situation because you're the omnipotent God that reigns. Yeah. You're the all-knowing God. You're the all-seeing God. So they began to, uh, we, she began to take up, began to look at this situation. And we know that she was probably weak. Feeble, probably anemic, mm -hmm. and, ha and, and, and we know that, like I said, she had spent air all her money, and she was alone in this condition. Sister Green, how do you know that she was alone in this condition? Well, if you know Bible, the Mosaic Law talks about being unclean. Mm -hmm. And she, because of her condition, she was 
isolated from society. Yes. You couldn't come around nobody. You couldn't be in the in crowd. You had to be alone until your issue has stopped. You couldn't sit on certain things. You couldn't touch certain things. Cause you, and, and, and not what the, the situation was getting better, but it was getting worse. Have you ever been through a situation where you prayed and asked God, and it seemed like when you prayed and stood that situation getting better, it got worse? Yes. But that should give us more determination. And he comes in and he gives us that strength yes. that we need day by day. Mm -hmm. He said we, the, the daily bread that we receive is our substance day by day. Mm -hmm. The daily bread being his word. So she, uh, she was in this situation all isolated mm -hmm. from society. And it looked like in this hemor hemorrhagic condition that it was getting worse. And she was more alone. And it looked like it was a hopeless situation. But God always has a but yes. in his word. <laughs> if you read Mark 5, 27, the next verse, it says, uh, when she had heard of Jesus, mm. came in the press behind mm. and touched his garment. Yes. When she had heard mm. of, of Jesus, she came in at the press behind and touched this woman. Was this woman supposed to be in the crowd? No. Uh, no, she wasn't supposed to be in the crowd. But when she heard, <laughs> the word Sunday school lesson told us this morning, have ears to hear. Yeah. She had heard that Jesus was in the midst. Yeah. And she had wasted all her substance, all her money, everything that she had. She was alone. She was still in her issue, but she heard. We got to hear the word of God. Sometimes I, I have gone through some things and it has taken me to come to church to hear the word of God, even though I have it at home to read for myself. But it's sometime when we get together collectively and that word comes across the pulpit or whoever, it gives strength to our body, to our spiritual body. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit has said. And when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him and touched his garment. Her faith, after her hope turned into faith. Yes. And faith came by hearing the word of God. The word was in the midst of her. Yes. And she heard him, she pressed away until she touched him. Sometimes, saints of God, we got to keep pressing yes. until we touch him. We give up. Sometimes in the press. Mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore. I can't take it anymore. This is too much. But he said, reach out and touch. Mm -hmm. I think about it. Hallelujah. Yes. So yes. she said, mm -hmm. um, in verse 28, she said, for she said, she said, if I may but touch mm -hmm. his clothes, I shall be made whole. Mm -hmm. I shall be whole. I shall. Be whole. Yes. For she said, if I may, she spoke it into existence. Yes, she, did. She, she might not have opened her mouth, but she said within herself, with hope, if I could just touch the garment. One text said, if I can touch his him, I shall be made whole. And, and, and this makes me think about the song that I can't sing it, but I remember poets of it. It says, reach out and touch the Lord yes. as he go by. He was going to Jar he was going to Jara's house to see about the uh, the daughter that was dying, mm -hmm. but he he had time to see to this woman's need. Yes. So here uh, here she demonstrated hope, mm -hmm. and her hope turned into faith because yes. she said, "If I I know I can, nobody's gonna come by and pick me up. I heard that this man was in town. I heard that the Messiah was here." But if I can get down to where he is, yeah. sometimes we got to get up off our bed of affliction. Yeah. Sometimes we got to leave those thoughts alone yeah. and, and lay them at the side and move on yeah. to where the Lord is. Sometimes I got to get to the mm. saints of God where we can all come together and pray yeah. and we can see God. And then I know, hallelujah, yeah. that I'm going to get a touch from the Lord. So she pressed her way. 
So her hope was dem his, her hope was demonstrated by her actions she did. Mm -hmm. And then it says, um, and the power of God mixed with faith and hope mm -hmm. brought restoration to her body. Wow. She saw our healing and she went for it because the healer was in the midst. Yeah. Hallelujah. What and and then you ask I mean I know Psalm is thinking because I did. I, what is significant about the uh, touching the hem of the garden, mm -hmm. the garment? Virtue. <laughs> and court, according to prophecy in Malachi four and two, it says, "But to you who fear my name, <clears throat> the Son of Righteousness, and you know that what righteousness means, that's Tanisquinu. Mm -hmm. He is Jehovah Tanisquinu, the Son of Righteousness." He says. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Oh, yeah. The word wing in this verse is the same word as borders. And it's also seen in Numbers 15 and 38, which says, Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels. Mm -hmm. And the tassels, the Hebrew name for tassels, was sitsut. Mm -hmm. Sitsut and on the corner of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a card of blue on the tassels of each corner. So this woman, let me know, she was a believer. Mm -hmm. She was a Hebrew. She understood. She knew God. She knew what it meant to press and touch yeah. the garment of the priest. Yeah. She knew that he was the high priest. Mm -hmm. And she, she said, if I could just get to the high priest, and touch the heel. I didn't spend my money with all these doctors. They ain't did nothing for me. But take my money and tell me, come back next time. Try this pill, and then we'll see what happened on your next visit. Mm. And then when we come back on the next visit, we're going to add another pill. Mm. Do all of these things. But she said, but if I can just reach out and touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. Yeah. She spoke healing before it was manifested. Yeah. We got to speak over ourselves yeah. before it's even manifested. Yeah. We can't speak what we see in the natural. Mm -hmm. The Sunday school lesson, we that have eyes to see and ears to hear, yeah. it's going to be given unto us yeah. in abundance. So she spoke it before she even felt it. Okay. Before it even happened. We can look at our situation. Oh, yeah, they're doing, they acting all crazy. Family not doing right. But then when we begin, yeah, they say, yeah, this pew over here is full. Yeah, they, we speak those things into existence. The word of God tells us that we can uh, speak those things as not, as though they were. And that's what she did. She reached out and she began to uh, speak it. But she, so the woman knew that if that, that, the, if that, uh, that the Messiah then surely I can just get close enough to touch the hem of his tassel of his garment, and I can surely receive healing. So that's what she did. She, so, um, she was embracing the promise that the Messiah had healing in his wings. And you know, sometimes when we go through, and when God come in and do it, it's just like he just picked us up and just carried us to a blessing. Yeah. I mean, we feel like we're riding on the wings of the Lord. Because it just like, poof, and it happened. He just kind of fluttered, yes. and it happened. So she said uh, she knew the scripture in Numbers. She knew that there was healing in his wings. So she looked upon Jesus and believed that, uh, that he was who he claimed to be. She knew he was a mild Messiah. And when she touched the hem of his garment, it was the same as touching him. She looked to him with hope for an incurable condition, and when her faith touched his touched his faith, yes. uh, well, faith, her faith touched his grace. That's what happened. She was healed. She was made whole. Not when she went home, mm -hmm. not when yeah. uh, an hour from now, yes. but immediately. Yes. Have God ever showed you a right now miracle? Yes. You're looking at a miracle once, something that you couldn't do, but now you can do it. <laughs> Because you believe your prayer, you believe in hope yeah. that he was the restore. He is the God of hope and restoration. You're looking at the situation and it's changing before your eyes. Yes. That's what happened with her. She spoke it within herself before Jesus said, made it known. Mm. He made it known. She knew it, but he, he made it known. 
So here in verse uh, uh, 29, it says, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Mm. Who touched my clothes? Yeah. Because he knew the word too. Yes, he yes, knew yes, that he uh, even though that he was he was the healer, mm -hmm. but he honored God's word. Yes. Who touched him? They understood everybody that was around understood what he meant. The healer was uh, in, in the city. He was in Gennesaret. And he came through and she reached out and touched. And Jesus, he immediately knew that his virtue had went out. Mm -hmm. And his virtue is his power. Mm -hmm. He felt the power of God, or his power. And he knows those who truly touched him with their heart. Yes. Going back to Sunday school, tied in. Those that seek him with his whole heart. Yes. With our whole heart, we're going to find him. We're not going to be lacking. He knows our cries. So when he knew that his virtue was gone, that his power had gone out from him, uh, he began to answer. And then, then in verse uh, 31, and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the mother too thronging thee. Which means, you see all these people bumping into your master? Why are you, why are you saying uh, that who touched me? Everybody's touching you. But no, this was a different touch. Yes, it was. God knows those that yes. he know everybody in the crowd. Yes. And he knows those that are seeking him with a true heart. Yes. He knows, hallelujah. Yes. He I always tell women, and when you're going through, and especially when you're interceding for your family, your yes. children, God knows a mother cry. Yes. He answers a mother's cry. Yes. And this and he this woman here, he knew that this woman needed to, he needed a healing. So she, with her perseverance, her hope, her faith in him, he restored her. And he wanted to know, who touched me? Who touched me? <clears throat> ah. uh, and then and, and he let you know the disciples weren't in the spirit when they said that. Mm. Everybody talking to you. They weren't in the spirit. They didn't know what was going on. But he knew what was going on. Yes. And in verse 35, and he looked around. Ooh, this is the one that gets me. When you start thinking about her condition, and you're thinking about the 430, uh, 4,383 uh, days of this issue. And when I read verse 32, tears began to flow down my eyes because it says, and when he looked around about to see her that had done this thing, he looked, think about it, he looked and saw her. Yes. He looked and saw her out of all the people because of her faith, because of her hope. Don't think that you're going to seek the Lord with your whole heart and he's not going to see you. He's going to see you when you're going through. When you say, Father, I can't go another further. Lord, except you do it, I, it can't be done. God, I stretch my hand unto thee. No other help do I know. Don't think that the Lord is not going to see you. Mm. Don't think that he's going to, ah, woo. Mm. And when he saw her, y'all, woo, he said, he's, woo, glory to God. It, yeah, it still does something to me. He looked and saw her mm -hmm. out of all the people. Mm. He saw her. God sees you. Yes, he does. The Lord yes. sees us. Thank you, Lord. If you are sincere, he will see you. Yes. He knows what you're going through. He cares for you. He knows just what to do. Yeah. I said this message come to encourage the saints. Yeah. It come. We got people that we're caring about, mm -hmm. that we love, mm -hmm. that are going through situations and conditions. Yeah. And we're reaching out. And we're touching the Lord. Mm -hmm. It says, and then verse two, uh, 33, it says, but the woman Fearing and trembling, because she knows she wasn't supposed to be in the crowd. Mm -hmm. In the natural, sometimes you got to go beyond the natural. That's right. I know what it looked like, but I'm not caring what it looked like. I know that I don't look like what I'm going through. You got to go. You got to reach beyond. Yeah. And sometimes the Lord will have you to do things that is not of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. She was out of order according to the Mosaic law, but she needed a healing. Yeah. So sometimes we got to. 
we, we might have to get out of order to get our healing. So this woman fearing in verse uh, 33, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. She wasn't shamed. She told him everything. We got to get real with God. God, this is bothering me. This is deep down in my spirit. I, yeah. I have it. It just makes you think about when you get ready to have a baby. There's no shame in that. Yeah. You go all open so that the baby can come forth. So this woman had no shame in her game. And she told him because she knew that he knew anyway. You can't keep nothing from the Lord. He said, ask and you shall, it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock. Ha. She was knocking. Open. She was knocking yeah. with every press. Ha. Knock and it shall be open unto thee. Yeah. Or given thee. So a lot of times we think that we just going to get there. Somebody come lay hands on us and we are well. Okay. Some things that happen like that. It happen like that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's going to take a press, y'all. Yeah. It's going to take a whole heart seeking. And when we, when we seek him with our whole heart, we're not going to be without. So... Um, uh, let me read my note what I said but, fear, but the woman fearing and trembling know, knowing what was done in her came and fell down she humbled herself she worshipped him every knee shall bow mm. every tongue mm. shall confess yeah. this is what she did yeah. she bowed and her tongue confessed the truth Amen. she knew by law that she was not supposed to be in the middle of the crowd due to her unclean condition but he claimed <laughs> He calmed her fears by saying, uh, look what he's, uh, uh, he calmed her fears, and I want you to see what he said unto her in verse 34. And he said unto her, daughter. one word, daughter, ha. you got it, yeah. daughter. daughter, and I imagine he said it so kind, daughter. Yeah. 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 Had the Lord ever, have you ever heard the word the Lord tell you to call you daughter? Yeah. It's so yeah. sweet. Yes, it is. Yeah, I remember one time I was stretched out. I'm mm -hmm. like this woman. I was in the press. Ah. And I needed the Lord to heal my body. Mm -hmm. And I was stretched out. And I heard him say, daughter, get up. Mm -hmm. Woo, sweet. Mm -hmm. Mother, what's the song you just said? The precious name of Jesus. Yes. He's sweet. And he said, daughter, thy what? Faith. Your faith oh. had made thee whole. Yes. Glory to God. Your faith, you believe that if you could just touch me. Yeah, yeah. Not that I, he had to make a big scene, but just, let me just touch his wings. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just, healing is in his wings. Mm -hmm. yeah, glory to God. And so he said, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And the whole of thy plague, and, and be, let me get to, and be what it says, go in peace. And be whole of thy plague. Yes. A plague. Mm. Some sickness comes as a plague. Mm. Out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Some are just outright attacked from the enemy. Yes, but he said that I think I've come that you may have life. Yeah. And, and have it more abundant. Wonder. He bore the stripes that we mm. might be healed. Amen. So we don't have to receive these things that the enemy has put on us. This was an un, um, unnatural condition. Yes. Don't tell us what was causing her to have issues, mm -hmm. but the master touched her. Yes. When she touched the master, and then the master touched her. Yes. When he said, daughter, <laughs> ah, she would not, he didn't call her, you're not outcast, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be here, you're unclean, you know better, none of that, but daughter, Come sit at the welcome table. Mm. You're welcome. You are accepted in the beloved. Yes, your faith, your hope, and your perseverance have made you acceptable and whole. Amen. Because we got to go beyond the norm sometimes. Yes. When, you, when you're going through and you want the Lord to do something, you might step back and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me hear what my father's saying. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me hear what my spiritual is. Let me fine tune this. 
because it's too much noise. You know if there was a crowd, it was noisy there. But I made it when Jesus stopped the crowd and he went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, somebody touched me. He calmed the crowd to see her. And what I like about it, she never gave up on hope. She was restored hope. Even when the odds were against her. You got to go against the odds. You got to go against the grain sometimes. I'm not what I look like. Mm. She first had to fight the crowds to receive her healing. Yeah. And, and, and not only fight the crowds, she had to get enough strength to go in the crowd. Yeah, that's right. How often do we give up before we receive what we need? Mm -hmm. How often? Mm -hmm. How often do we, get, uh, do we set out determined only to let determination just frizzle out? Mm. And we are left with unfulfilled hopes and dreams. How often do we pray, and when we receive no answer, we allow hope and faith to fall by the wayside? Our faith will be rewarded if we do not faint. Because the word of God says that you shall reap if you faint not. I know that my God is going to make a way. He's the way maker. Yes, he is. I know that my redeemer lives. That's what Job said, didn't he? Yes, he Full of swords. But he said, I know that my Redeemer lived. He had to go through some things. And we go through some things. Amen. But, to, but our hope mm. and our faith still need to be in check. Amen. He is the God of hope. He is the God of restoration. And he specializes in things that appear hopeless to man. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. And I know that the story here stops um, but I wanted to put in verse uh, 35. And it says, while he yet spoke, while he yet speaking to her, there came from the rulers uh, of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troubles thou the master? After people seeing him heal, there was some still down. Mm -hmm. Here come one of uh, Jairus' house and said, he don't need to come now, she did. But we know if you read on to this story, he said, no, she's not dead. Right. She just asleep. So he went, and I'm not going to go into that because I want to stay with the woman. But he went and, and, and put out the dollars and raised the, woman, raised the little girl up. Yes, and he presented did. her to her parents. Mm -hmm. She just sleep. Yeah. So our faith will be rewarded. Out of all that they're going on, and I imagine a woman uh, that, that he just here was saying, oh, no, it ain't over for the little girl. <laughs> Let him go on to yes. the little girl's house. She ain't dead. He's going to raise her up. Mm -hmm. So here, like I said, we have four members right now that are dealing with neurological problems. Mm -hmm. And we know that we can touch God with them in their faith. Amen. What seems impossible or the doctors don't understand, Eliza Sip. Yes. The God of restoration can make a difference. Yes. And so we just want to give God his praise for being worthy, for he alone. Um, he's already working it out. Yes, I got the good report from Brother Span, and Sister Span is coming along. Makaya is at home. Mother is making jokes. She's doing well. Yes. But we still, and Sister Connie told me yesterday, she said that uh, she's making progress. Hi. So he is a God of restoration, and we just want to give God a round of applause for that. Because he's able to do it. Abundantly above all that we ask for things. So I just want to encourage you today to hold on, old soldier. Press your way. And the God of hope and restoration, he will make a, he will make a difference. And I'm going to ask at this time if our bishop will come and he would offer up a prayer for those four names that I named. And turn the hands over to his. Amen. 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 Amen.